Hey, what's up there, Keto Challengers? Happy day seven, happy Sunday. We're diving right into our topic for today, which is all about avoiding vegetable oils on a ketogenic diet. Now you're probably like, wait, what does vegetable oils have anything to do with the ketogenic diet? Let's break this down a little. If you're anything like the standard American family, you probably have one, two, maybe even three of these types of oils in your pantry downstairs. And what these oils are, these are highly processed seed oils or vegetable oils, which is a huge misnomer um, and a marketing ploy to get people to believe that these seed oils are more healthy for our bodies. Unfortunately, scientists have discovered a correlation between the rise of chronic diseases and the overconsumption of these seed oils in the American culture. Now these seed oils, I'm talking about corn oil, canola oil, um, grape seed, rapeseed oil, cottonseed oil, even soybean oil. All of these oils are highly processed and highly chemicalized in order to draw the oils out of these seeds. You can't take a um, sesame seed and squeeze it and get oil from it. You might squish it, but you're not gonna get oil from a seed. It has to go through a huge process of chemical infusion and heat, um, um, large amounts of heat and pressure for these seeds to produce oil. Now that in of itself makes their molecular structure susceptible to breakage, and a fancy word for breakage is oxidation, with the exposure of heat. And what happens when we ingest these oils is they cause a free radical cascade and inflammation in our body. If you talk to any doctor, they are going to say that high levels of inflammation in our body leads to cellular dysfunction, leads to organ malfunction, and eventually, if we all ignore it, leads to disease down the road. Now, it's like I tell my nine-year-old who wants nothing more than to work with fractions and decimals and percentages, but has trouble adding you know, double digit numbers or even three digit numbers together because of the carrying of the tens place and the hundreds place, et cetera, et cetera. That is fundamental is what I explained to him. You gotta take care of the fundamentals in order for you to do the complex things in math. And the same goes for our body. If we take care of the foundation and the fundamental, which is getting rid of the sources of inflammation, then you will take care of the more complex um, systems in our body and making sure that they function optimally. I think it just makes sense, right? And so these um, polyunsaturated fats have infiltrated our food system to the nth degree. If you look at any processed food, any cracker, any cookie, any ice cream, anything that we have in our store shelves, at 80% of the food in the supermarkets have these um, polyunsaturated fats in their ingredients. And not just part of their ingredients, most of it is high up, maybe the second, maybe the third, fourth ingredient, which makes up a bulk of that food item that you're eating. Now, why would, why would companies put these polyunsaturated fats in our foods? Well, these polyunsaturated fats help extend the shelf life of food. So if you are a food manufacturer or if you are a company that is trying to sell your cookies or your crackers or your food item, your breads even, you wanna make sure that they have the longest shelf life. So why not infuse them with oils that are supposed to be healthier for you that will do that and help increase your bottom line? It's an unfortunate fact, but it is a fact. Now I challenge you to go look in your in your pantry right now and pull out a couple um, food items and see if there's not canola oil or corn oil or uh, soybean oil in there. Okay, a lot of these are additives um, and they elicit um, inflammation in our body and you certainly don't have to take my word for it. Look up Dr. Ken Berry, look up Dr. Paul Saladino. You can even catch a couple books from Dr. Catherine Shanahan. They all talk about the dangers of overconsuming these polyunsaturated fats, which um, contribute to a 
negative lipoprotein profile. Now there are many lipoproteins out there and what a lipoprotein simply is, is a fat uh, molecule when we ingest dietary fat. Now our body doesn't know the difference between a good saturated fat like butter, ghee, um, or an animal fat, or a polyunsaturated fat or a monounsaturated fat, and it'll encase it in a membrane. This becomes a lipoprotein. These are the VLDLs, the LDLs, the HDLs in our body that get measured when we do a lipid profile. And you've heard of good fats and bad fats and LDL and HDL. Dr. Katherine Shanahan actually has a really great chapter about our lipid cycle in our body, saying that there is nothing wrong with the levels of your lipoproteins, they all function to deliver nutrients and antioxidants and fat soluble molecules um, to our different parts of our body that need it. So let's say, for example, the brain needs some additional vitamins or antioxidants or minerals, it's going to signal so that lipoproteins go up to the brain so that it can deliver um, their packages, kind of like FedEx, um, DHL or USPS or, or, or UPS, right? Those are delivery services. Now what happens in our, lipo, in our lipid cycle is if there is a, um, if there is any sort of glycation on our cells, then that lipoprotein can't make its delivery. So that lipoprotein ends up circulating in our vascular system, looking to make its protein drop or vitamin drop or package drop, right? But it's unable to do it if there's glycation on the receiving cell. Now, what causes glycation? Um, glucose and a high carbohydrate diet causes glycation. Glucose, fructose, it doesn't matter what kind of sugar, sugar, sugar molecule it is, sugar binds to any proteins, whether it's the proteins on our hands, if you eat cotton candy or if you get any sort of honey on your hands, you know that it's sticky. Um, or um, the proteins in our red blood cells, our hemoglobin protein in our red blood cells. Um, glucose molecules bind to them, they're sticky, they glycate the exterior of cells, okay? And they, they block and disrupt the communication of our lipoproteins to our cells. So if our lipoproteins can't make a connection because that cell is glycated, it, is, it has a whole bunch of glucose stuck to them, then that lipoprotein continues to float and will eventually become small dense protein molecules. And scientists have um, contributed small lipoprotein profiles to um, the plaque in our arteries and in our veins. Now there's two types of density profiles for lipoproteins. They can either be big and fluffy, and those scientists are saying those big and fluffy ones have a lot of the vitamins and minerals that need to be delivered to different parts of our body, or they could be small and dense. And those small and dense profiles um, have actually been shown to be, um, to be caused by an overconsumption of these corn oils. Uh, and these small dense protein, small dense lipoproteins can much more easily get stuck in our epithelial walls, which is the cells that are lining our vascular system, that would cause um, plaque buildup, right? Atherosclerosis. So it's these industrialized seed oils that we really need to avoid. Again, look at those doctors that I recommended and dump out your seed oils, dump out your vegetable oils. Much better off um, cooking with your animal fats. Um, some people save their bacon drippings um, if you want to cook with that, but you can certainly cook with some butter, some ghee, which is clarified butter. Tallow is one of my favorites, um, and lard. Uh, you can also cook with some um, coconut oil, which will impart some coconut flavor to your foods, or you can um, also cook with some avocado oil. Those are not saturated fats. Those are monounsaturated fats but they are more stable forms of fat that will allow them to contribute to the lipid cycle. Now that's public enemy number one. You also have to get rid of public enemy number two, which is the consumption or overconsumption of carbohydrates and glucose, because once your cells become glycated, it's just as if that address label on that package that your lipoprotein transport molecule is trying to deliver, it 
becomes ripped off or blocked or smudged or whatever and that connection can't be made. So if we get rid of the clication, if we get rid of the small dense lipoprotein profiles from those polyunsaturated fats, you are going to take care of your fundamentals. You're going to be able to take care of it from a baseline perspective so that your more um, complex systems can function properly. Okay, so I know that's a lot of information for day seven. I know that's kind of a heavy topic for day seven, um, but it's an important one. And at this point, if you are doing what you need to do on a ketogenic diet and lowering your carbohydrate intake, if you are increasing your healthy fat consumption, now this is the next thing that you should do is to get rid and stop using those vegetable oils. Literally, go downstairs, dump them out, get rid of them, put them away, put them in a box, put them outside because you don't want them in your household, okay? If you want me to share those specific resources to you, happy to do that. Um, just DM me directly. All right, happy day seven. Let's continue on. We've only got eight, nine, and 10 left for this challenge. You guys are rock stars. I'm super proud of you. Let's get to it. Have a good weekend. Bye-bye.